Well, Betty, here we are back on the Nile River as we are going toward uh, Aswan. Yeah, uh, we're not going to get there this time. But that's not us. Oh, that's not? Oh, that's right. That's are, not us. And that's really not us. You know, that's somebody else that you photographed. On. Uh, that's true. Uh, but we're going by these uh, little villages that we can see. And as we mentioned on the last program, you know, sometimes you look on one side of the river and you see uh, very dry. And then you look on the other side and you see all of the... Uh, date palms and uh, a lot of uh, vegetation and so we get to see a lot of this here but you know uh, where we left from was the town of, of Luxor and uh, I, I wanted to mention that that was named Thebes uh, in the in the early days of the, the early days of uh, of the exploration there of course of the the Romans and the Greeks but Thebes was the great capital of Egypt during what they called the New Kingdom and it was a crowded city. It stretched along the Nile's eastern bank in an area extending between the present little town of Luxor and its suburb, Karnak. And uh, that's about 500 kilometers south of uh, Cairo, which is now, of course, the capital. And so uh, I didn't realize that, uh, that Karnak at that time was uh, uh, a suburb of Luxor. And, of course, in, in the preceding programs, we were uh, taking a look at both of the temples between uh, Luxor and Karnak, or rather at both of those places, and then found out that there were something like a, a thousand statues that lined a walkway between the, the two places. Anyway, the uh, ancient Egyptians uh, called the city the City of the Scepter, and it was uh, the capital of Egypt's, what they call the fourth Nome. That's spelled N-O-M-E. Now, it was the Greeks who many centuries later called it Thebes, a name already in use by Homer, who you might recall uh, speaks of Thebes of the Hundred Gates, referring not so much to the city's gates, but to the impressive pillars. Uh, and those were called the most privileged of seats, the, the pillars. As the, uh, a pillar was a seat? I, hey, take it up with Homer, not me. I don't know. That's what he said. Isn't that what you just said? That's right. Yeah, that's, but that's, that was according to Homer. All right. Uh, to but that was at the nearby temple of, uh, of Karnak, which, of course, now is a suburb. Actually, I, I think they're both really kind of together. But uh, Egypt's largest temple was built to the glory of Amun, the unknowable, the king of gods, as he was called. And Thebes, the city of the living... Uh, was built on the Nile's eastern bank, and that was the kingdom of Amun, whose earthly son was the Pharaoh. Now, and of course that for Egyptian mythology, uh, on the opposite bank of the Nile, at the foot of the Theban mountains, was, uh, and of course those were called the sacred mountains, where the sun does set, and that stretched to, to the capital's huge royal and uh, civilian burial grounds. And, of course, this was called the kingdom of Osiris, or the lord of the afterlife, as he was called by the Egyptians. And, uh, Betty, you can see right there, uh, that's a little, I think that was kind of like a little fishing hut there because uh, the people in this particular area were fishing there or, or maybe one of those little, little farming huts because uh, uh, it was so close to the river but I, I don't think it was a place where where they lived uh, you know all the time I think that was just sort of like a little cottage to get out of the sun which you yeah, need to do we see a lot of those every place we go whenever there's any agriculture at all if they uh, I see it even coming from Sanger to Fresno I see little sh huts like that for mm -hmm. for shelter from the sun or a little maybe a little time to lay down and, and rest depending on the hours that you had put in and uh, of course then you go bathing if you want to or take a bath <laughs> what else what else could you do to get clean but you get in the river well that's what the Nile was for I mean the Nile was just uh, just sort of uh, Wash your clothes, do everything, everything there I mean it's just yeah that, that's the problem with it they did everything <laughs> <laughs> well that's why you and I didn't go swimming in it. Uh, right that's right Anyway, I wanted to uh, uh, tell you just a little bit more about uh, what we saw back on the other end of the, the river where we, where we first started from. Uh, we mentioned uh, the necropolises or the, the burial places of uh, both the kings and the queens and also uh, some of the nobles and some of the uh, civilian folks that we, that we saw too. And I want to mention again too that the paintings that we saw uh, in the tombs that we were allowed to go into are really considered some of the greatest artwork of all time. And what amazed me was that the colors were so vibrant and so bright and that you could, uh, I mean, today, you know, like 3,000 years later. Yeah, but so. what makes them the greatest of all times? Is it because of the accuracy or the artistic value of them for that long ago or what? You're asking me? Yes, sir. You just told me that, that that's what they were. 
Well, and then that's if you that's. You always have to back up your statements. If you make a statement, uh -huh. then you have to be able to give the facts for that statement. Okay. Well, I will have to defer to uh, one of the books on uh, on Egyptian history. Okay. Right. Oh, thank now, you. it may have been a little prejudiced. I don't. Know. But you know, I do have to agree with that. I mean, at that time, that th those were. Uh, have you seen any other paintings from three thousand years ago? <laughs> No, I haven't really. Well, I've I've been very cognizant of the fact that that they the women oh I suppose men too though they were absolutely beautiful ah uh, their aquiline noses and their slanted eyes I I really really think they were beautiful beautiful people. I think they must have been a very handsome people. That that that's very true. This is the ship that uh, that uh, we sailed on the Nile, and this is uh, part of the upper deck, and we saw there's a little small swimming pool right there. And if you look behind us, here comes another one. And another one, and another one. There was a pretty busy, uh, pretty busy for the tourists. Weren't and, it? Yeah. And did you notice the little putting green that they had up there? It was. It really wasn't. It was. An I think that was just astroturf imitation to walk on. grass. Yeah, to bring a little life to it or whatever. No, but I noticed he was getting afternoon tea right there. Chow time. Oh yeah. And I have to say, their food was absolutely excellent. We just had such a marvelous time, Betty. Uh, you know, in talking about the history of, of Egypt, uh, to kind of break it down a little bit, they, they, they had what they call the Old Kingdom, the Middle Kingdom, and the Second inter Intermediate Period. Now, that sounds a little confusing, and it is a little confusing, because uh, the Old Kingdom were the years from 2658 to the year 2150. Now, that's B.C. Mm -hmm. And then the, the First Intermediate Period was considered... 2150 to the years 2100 BC, the Middle Kingdom 2100 to 1750 BC, and the Second Intermediate, intermediate Period, whoo, it gets confusing, it was uh, from 1750 to 1550 BC. Yeah, so what? Well, it was important. I mean, if you were It was to them, of course. Well, of course, if you lived during those times, I mean, you wanted to know you wanted to know where you were, right? I know. I'm just pulling your leg because it, when you start spouting off dates and things, it kind of goes in one ear and out the other. You know, I thought if it's the time that I'm living in or it's just shortly before, you know, maybe like a thousand years. Well, AD, AD. And it means something <laughs> to me, but I think truly, as you, I, I'm joking, of course, but I think as you did tell us about how far back all of this civilization goes, it surely makes you insignificant. It does, doesn't mm -hmm. it? It really yes, does. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm going to explain it a little bit further. Okay. All right. All right here we go. Now, the new kingdom <clears throat> from the years 1550 to 1076 BC, this was considered the 18th dynasty, okay? And that was started by Othmosis. Osmosis? No, no, no. I, <laughs> <laughs> it's, spe it's spelled A H M O S I S. Oh, okay. And that goes, I mean, and he was the father, I'm not going to get into that lineage, yeah, but. Genealogy. Yeah, but anyway, remember we talked about Queen Hetzepeth? Yes, oh yeah, okay, she was right. a gorgeous gal. Yeah, well, she came along between the years 1479 to 1457 B.C., and she was of the New Kingdom in the 18th Dynasty. Now, let's jump over to the 19th Dynasty, and that was started by Ramesses I, and that was the year 1295 to 1294, again, in B.C., okay? And then let's jump to the 20th dynasty, which is 1188 to 1076 B.C., and that ended, as, uh, from what my research says, with Ramses the 11th in the year 1098 to 1076. All right, now, excuse me, it ended. Now, and then what, what came after that? I mean, it... it it, the time went on. I mean, they didn't just disappear. What? No, that's when you got into the third intermediate period. Oh, okay. okay. All right, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, then it jumps on and it goes down to the, to the Greeks and the Roman, and their period was considered 332 B.C. to 395 A.D. Okay. Okay, so we finally jump across Boy, those, the line. Those Romans got around, didn't they? Huh? Oh, they did. Oh, they did. It was man. incredible. Uh -huh. this, this is a good way to get around. And I don't know if that was a water buffalo or just a cow out there. I couldn't see. It was a little bit too far away. Almost looks like rice paddies there, doesn't it? Yeah, it's so green. I was, see, I look at that, and I think a little bit of China. Mm -hmm. You Very remember when so. we went down the Lee River? Oh, do I. And we saw the water, and we saw the... Uh, 
buffalo, water buffalo, water mm-hmm. buffaloes, and people washing their clothes. I think it, there were more cliffs and things in the background there, though, and it wasn't quite as wide. But it's very, very similar. Many similarities. Yes, there there are, and uh, of course, as we know, you know, any any river like this of uh, ancient times and even today, uh, I mean, these are the lifelines of these particular areas, and we can see that again. Here we have people not only fishing but also bathing out here too, and in, in one of these little boats, and uh, you know, I, I sometimes wonder what some of these people who live there, you know, all the time think of when they see these great big uh, tourist boats with all the tourists hanging over the side with their with their cameras and their video cameras clicking and shooting away like that. Well, I know what they think. They what? think money because uh, the like the little kids they'll die for it and one of the places we stopped and I'm sure you we have it on tape somewhere they had clothes in those little boats and proceeded to sell them to us. So we were a good economy for them. Well, economy, uh, yes, that's, that's true, because tourism is, you know, is a big, big part of the Egyptian economy. And uh, so we are going to show that. It's interesting that you had mentioned that, because a little bit later on in this show, we're going to do that. There are some <laughs> that we were, we, were, we were told about this, but, and they said, now you, you watch, because there are going to be some people here that have all sorts of clothing and tablecloths and everything to, uh, to sell, and uh, you can buy that. We thought, well, how in the world do you do that? We don't get off the boat, but you wait and see. It, it, yeah. It, it, it happens because uh, I think the Egyptians are, are very, very good uh, merchants. They certainly very are. Entrepreneurs, huh? You know, when there is a way to make money, intelligent people find it. Uh, I don't necessarily, shouldn't say intelligent people, resourceful people mm-hmm. find a way to make it. And it's out there for everybody if you just get the bright ideas. <laughs> Marv, let's get some bright ideas for Channel 49. and. We do our best, don't we, to make. Yeah, maybe we can. Maybe we can get a boat and go down the King's River. Think any? Sell, think you sell, sell anything off of that? <laughs> I don't think so. With my luck on rafting, I'd end up under the raft. You know. Well, uh, you didn't. You didn't have to worry too much on this on this particular trip. This wasn't like uh, Costa Rica, where we yeah. where we went whitewater rafting, and uh, oh boy, that was that was something. <laughs> you will stay with me for a long, long time. <laughs> Uh, this is one of the crew members on the uh, on the ship here, and, and, and this is going to tell you something. Now he's tying those uh, those floats or those bumpers there, you know, right next to uh, to the ship there. And I, and I kept wondering, now why is he doing that? We're not we're not scheduled to dock right away anywhere, but uh, actually, as we got a little further down the river or up the river, I should say, uh, we find out that, and here we are, we're, we're close to civilization. Now, oh, okay, this is, maybe we're going to stop here and get off, but. No, that was that was not the case. It was that there were going to be a lot of other uh, tour ships uh, that were going to be right here in the same proximity of where we are. And so as a result, uh, I guess they wanted to take some precautions just in case uh, these ships would, you know, bump up against one another. And we can see why, because, Betty, we are getting to that area right now that you just mentioned a little bit ago uh, where the people are going to get out. And, uh, in fact, there's a few of them that are out there already. But as soon as these uh, ships come up and they, you know, drop their anchor for a little bit, Wow, I mean, they were just all out there. But before we get there, we can see uh, one of the other accompanying ships that's, uh, in fact, it looks like it's going to pass us up a little it bit right did, here. And I was mad. You Why? know, that's like when you're driving on the highway and you, somebody cuts in front of you, and you, oh, I, that really aggravates me. And I thought, how dare they? But of course, it, I, I realized that they had precedence, even though they were behind us, because you have to, you don't take a number per se, but you have to go, they're not the locks, but you have to go through a passageway. And, and, and so you can't, all the ships can't go at one time, so they allocate certain times for certain ships to go through. Well, it sounds, it sounds to me like you've been through the Panama Canal. Uh, that I have several times going again. <laughs> uh, well, now we can see that uh, there's a little more activity here on the, on the shore of the Nile. As we get by, in fact, in fact, like you say, there there's some of the kids out there already. Did you throw any money out there? Sure. Oh, it's fun. Yeah. And, when, and even when we were in China, we would get all the little uh, boxes of lemonade and orange juice that, that were give, you know, that we had for our use, and we would toss them over to the kids. And oh man, it was just a holiday, Christmas for them. Big. Uh, they just loved having the little gifts like that. It was a big treat. Well, this is uh, this is a big treat for us too because uh, this gave a lot of people a chance to uh, 
uh, to purchase uh, uh, some of the things that they have been looking forward to uh, to getting. Well, and it was really nice because you didn't have to get off the ship. Yeah. I looked, but but uh, <laughs> I'm sure you'll see it in a little while. They throw the things up on the yeah. deck and. <laughs> It is, it's hairy. It's just ridiculous. People leaning over to try to catch a dress. They don't, I mean, golly, they could fall right over. But it, just, it was the excitement of the game. I think so. And now you can see some of the other uh, cruise ships that are out there. And then here, here come the folks out with their, uh, out with their little boats. And uh, my golly, you know, what surprised me is that they had all sorts of different types of things for sale. And uh, the first word that you heard out was, hello, hello. And, uh, and, and, how, and then the, you heard the response from the tourists, how much, how much? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you see, and it was a little bit breezy that day. Do you remember? Well, we could see the flags as you took a picture of yeah, the flags. Yeah, it was. So yeah. it was breezy. But look at the balance that he's been able to maintain, showing all of us. See that? There's one of the types of dresses that they they were selling. They were sort of like something that you would wear for evening. You wear to a costume party or, you know, nothing real elaborate. Well, you were looking for a pair of pants or something like that, weren't you? I mean, a long pair of uh, real colorful things? I would have liked to have bought something. No, I really want something like they wear, the kind of the roby things that you just tie around your waist that are so comfortable. Yeah, I would have liked, but I look. It's fun. I look at everything. Why well, miss it? I'm. I don't miss a trick when it's come to something like that. It's part of traveling. Yeah, what amazed me is that they, you know, they put these things in, in plastic bags and then then tossed them up, and a couple of them actually wound up in the swimming pool of the ship that we were. On. Yeah, and then we just tossed them back when they said no. Look at, look at, look at. Isn't that cute? <laughs> <laughs> oh my word! Several ladies bought one of those. When I went on shore, uh, I, I I was watching them doing their shopping, and they were very sexy. The the see the little garment that uh -huh. they would wear. So I guess you'd want to wear a mask to hide your face if you wore that skimpy <laughs> dress. <laughs> Well, you know, some people bought these because uh, we also had a had a costume uh, uh, night, a dress up night, one night on the ship too, as as you do in any type of cruise that you take. And so a lot of people came in different uh, different things, and of course, a lot of the men came in the jalabias, which is that what that gentleman is wearing right there. You know. I was just going to ask you if that wasn't what that was, because you bought one of those in uh, where'd you buy that? In well, Egypt? I no, I bought one. Uh, I bought one in Egypt the time there before when we were there uh, up in. Cairo, and then I've I also have some friends that have uh, brought some Yay. back from uh, from Jerusalem. But you know what is and and of course I thought, hey, that's that's really great because the cotton in Egypt is yeah, so good. Great. But I, I I looked at some of those that uh, were purchased in the Middle East, and guess where they were made? In the, in Egypt. China. In China, oh God! But this is what they say: all the things you buy today, you have to turn them over carefully and look at them because. The majority of things. Well, you know why, of course. Labor is mm -hmm. so cheap. So we're actually promoting it when we buy things stamped in China. Now that's pretty, isn't it? Yeah, that was that was pretty. It was such a pretty color. But uh, you know, the thing, see with the trees. Now watch him. He, he rolls it up, puts it in a little plastic bag, and tosses it. And you really never know just exactly who it was that that was going to be for. <laughs> I know. And, then this, and now there were several ships, as we mentioned, that, that are here. So these little merchants are going from one to the other. If they didn't make a sale one place, well, you know that they're probably uh, you know, going to make it in a going to make it in another place there. I'm but, not sure what it cost. I think they they, they were averaged, bargaining. They, they, they were all yeah, bargaining. They, you could you come down with it, but I think the average price was around eight dollars. No, that's not bad. No, no, there was a lot of handwork on some of them, but then you saw some that didn't have anything on them, but a little lace and sequins. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, up oh, there goes one back down. That, that was a reject. Oh, there, there goes, goes another, another one, too. One, you see? Yeah. <laughs> Very honest, the people on the ship. They would never keep anything like that. They would immediately return it. Now, there's your pretty tablecloth. Trouble pretty. with that, you know, they are, and it's an unusual design. But you do want to feel it. I mean, and we know Egyptian cotton is world famous. Yes. But you want the good quality. If you, and, and, you know, some things are very sleazy. You wouldn't, It's not worth putting them in a suitcase. Well, that's why I think that uh, they were throwing them up there on board so that you could, uh, you know, you could, you could actually oh, yeah. sample the merchandise if you want one. to. I thought you want that, that black one? and gold, I thought that was attractive. And then I said to myself, where would you ever wear it? Wear it to, to church on Sundays? <laughs> I don't, I think, don't so. think so. <laughs> oh, 
but this, this, this <laughs> look at yeah. I, I, I like the animation of the guy. You know, I, these guys are real salespeople. Oh, look at those were pants. You told me that I had thought I had been looking. I didn't mm. realize until I see them that they were pants, but I, I didn't want them anyway. <laughs> you know, I don't know. You you know maybe you could have worn those to work. I mean that would have uh, that that would that would have been something. You think that would have been all right? Sure. Wear them with my tennis. No, I don't wear tennis shoes really. But uh, no, no, no. I'm more conservative than that most of the time. Well, now how about this one in red? Isn't this yeah. pretty? Uh huh. Well, do you remember at the party how many we did see of the women that had bought these dresses? Didn't come prepared to to be fancy and you know you don't need to be on these ships they all have costume parties i noticed that even with the panama canal on the big ships the big liners and it has costume party but you know it's not like it used to be uh maybe those that really first class first 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 class well, people I, do no mm. i i think you're right i think uh because uh, cruising has become so popular i think when they you know originally uh, when you only had ships that were going across the Atlantic Ocean, and then you had a dress-up party, and I think they needed that probably for diversion. If you, yeah, really. But uh, today it's just sort of a, you know, just sort of a carry-on. I think of, uh, of of days past, but it is kind of fun, and and some people really get into it, and uh, and of course this was great because, like you say, for about eight bucks you could buy a, a costume and then you might take it home and wear it some more. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't recall you wearing a tux. You didn't bring a tux when no, you went. No, oh, I've never. I did one time, not on a cruise like this. <coughs> Excuse oh, not me. Not on this kind. No. No, 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 no. Because it, look what everybody's and wearing. You'd wear a white jacket. Everybody's it... wearing bathing suits. <laughs> <laughs> well, they didn't to the party. No, no, no. But I mean, this was this was. It was so warm going down the river or up the river rather. See, now you got me I, doing it. I got to don't know which way we were going, I'm up or down. I'm a bad influence, <laughs> I will admit. I am a bad influence. But uh, anyway, uh, no, I, I, on a cruise I took several years ago. I uh, Actually, now that I think back on that, a couple of cruises I did, I took, I took formal wear. But that's been a long, long time yeah. ago. And one of those was a transatlantic cruise. Okay. But that's when two, it was two weeks or so in, the, in going across and... Uh, uh, I well, you and you took a lot of suitcases. You took trunks. Today you take try to take one suitcase and a carry on and put them all together. That's right. I don't that's know right. Whether Dale bought anything there or no, not. No, this was a gentleman. This was an English gentleman that uh, uh, that some of our uh, people became very friendly with, and uh, he I think he purchased that for his wife. And the guy uh, with the hat on, you mean? The the, uh, the guy with the hat okay. and the cigar. Yeah, well, because I was saying, well, I know that's Dale. He's not an Englishman. He's a Fresno. <laughs> <laughs> no, there were there were a lot of people on the uh, uh, on the ship from, of course, from uh, from various countries. There, a lot of English uh, do take this uh, trip as well. Hey, I Eleanor. met I met some from from England as well. Our brewer, one of ours, right there, hanging on to the rail. She was looking over the clothes. I don't think she bought anything. No, <laughs> they were just in and said what a wonderful trip it was, and it was. It was a good trip. That way, it was a marvelous trip, and uh, someday perhaps we'll repeat this trip again, uh, uh, doing the Nile cruise and also visiting Cairo and uh, Aswan and Abu Simbel and Karnak and uh, Luxor, Thebes, as it was called. Uh, it, it was it was a truly amazing adventure. It's something that I had always wanted to do. We'd been in Egypt before. Uh, we had driven across the desert from Israel into Egypt, but on this particular trip, of course, uh, this was uh, this was a cruise designed around a cruise, which was lots of fun. And of course, then we got uh, to see the the antiquities. You have to you have to travel uh, a ways from Cairo, as we were doing. You uh, see a lot of the antiquities on the ocean liners. Were you talking about the personnel? <laughs> the passengers? The guests. <laughs> oh, well, you can do that on some. That's true because they're the people. Oops, there it goes. That's not nice. There it goes. Shame on me. Well, no, but uh, you have to be realistic. I mean, you know, it, now there were a lot of young people on this on yeah, this cruise too, but yeah. uh, of course older people who are retired and have the money and that can, you know, can take the uh, can take the cruises as such. I think these guys were just about ready to get Getting ready to pack it in, you know. I think we were about, our ship was about ready to leave too, to continue on. But they'll wait there for another one to come through and continue this. What energy they have. I, I, I have such admiration for people that get out and try to make a buck any way they can and to, to provide for their families and for themselves. It's great. It's just really neat. It is. It is neat. And it's, it's, it's nice that, uh, that, 
there are so many tourists there that uh, were able to, you know, help the economy somewhat. And uh, this lady, I was, I was asking her, I said, did, did you buy that? She wasn't quite sure whether the, the size was right or not. Yeah. And that, that's it. So I think she's going to send it back. back. Yeah, 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 send yeah. it back. Hey, do you have a, you've got a larger size down there for us? What did I tell you? There's one in the pool. That's a, remember, I told you okay. one landed yeah. in the pool. But it just floated. It sure. didn't even get wet. You kind of get carried away with the excitement of it all. And, and you buy just because, oh, golly, this is so exciting. Then you get back home and you think, what in God's name possessed me to buy this? You know, you know, you, then you well, it sits in a closet or you give it away. Well, that's part of the fun of it. Uh, this was the next morning, and I wanted to. I got up early. I wanted to see what a sunrise uh, coming over the over the Cairo River would uh, you know would the look Nile. like. Or the uh, the Nile, right? What do I say? <laughs> I say I'm putting myself back in Cairo here, but I'm not. No, we're 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 quite a ways from Cairo. And uh, so I took these at, uh, at various times so that we could watch the sun come up, which is kind of fun to do some well, mornings. You're a great one for that, getting up early, 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 and then finding birds to photograph. And I don't see many birds on this trip. Well, there weren't many, huh? There was one earlier on this one. There was an egret, I think, that was out. Uh, you on, yeah. usually give it star billing when you can see a bird. Man, nobody else has a chance. That was one of God's really pretty creatures. Oh, oh here it is, a little bit. Yeah, gorgeous? uh huh. And uh, you know, I'm, <gasps> the sun setting probably looks just as good. But there it is, coming up in the morning over the Nile. Isn't it beautiful? Uh -huh. Look at the water. Golden, mm -hmm. golden, golden. Oh, that's just beautiful, Mark. That looks like a, a photograph that you would take and hang up, and then, if as long as it's a photograph, that's fine. But if somebody did it as a painting. That couldn't be. That's not realistic. Well, it, it is realistic, believe me. And I, and you know, and the thing is, I didn't even have to go out on deck. I just shot this through the uh, through the windows there of uh, of the stateroom. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. oh, that's nice. Then you went back to bed. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. I think I did. Uh, but you see a lot of things uh, that are that are floating down the river. There's a lot of uh, there were a lot of water lilies that were that that we saw. Uh, uh, floating uh, in the Nile. But this is it's just it's beautiful. Well, listen, that's all the time that we have. If you're interested in any of our trips, give us a call at... 488-7443. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.